Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. So the first semester is over, I'm back home now, so I thought it would be a good time to sort of do a, an official, all-inclusive uh, update video on the air bearing ultra precision lathe project. Uh, unlike the last video I did like this, this time I've actually got props. So I'm just gonna go through and really sort of cover everything that I've been doing, everything that I've made so far. I know I've been posting smaller clips and little bits uh, on my channel, but this will give me an opportunity to really sort of review the progress that I've made so far and go over what we need to do next. So here is all the hardware that I've got so far made, slash acquired, slash ready to go. Uh, I'm just going to go through each thing and real quick uh, talk about it. First we're going to start with the axes, the X and the Z axis. Alright, so as I mentioned in my first video, the axes of this lathe are basically just based off of these two precision slides uh, from Gilman Precision, just because I had found them a while ago. Um, used to have them on my old crappy homemade milling machine, but this is a much more respectable use for them. So what I've done to sort of modify them and get them ready for this uh, project is basically do a full rebuild or as best as I can do a full rebuild. Uh, I re-scraped a lot of the surfaces um, to get them all flat uh, and in the best precision condition I can. As you can see I scraped the mating surface here between the two axes that way when I bolt it together it has super good uh, contact across it and it doesn't induce any distortions when I tighten the bolts. Um, and if I back this axis off enough, you can see, you can see a couple of the bolts here. It's literally just four, I won't back it off all the way, there's four countersunk bolts uh, that hold it in. Um, and because these surfaces are so flat and uh, precise, that's really all you need uh, for this application. Uh, that is, you don't really need anything more rigid than that. That is plenty enough. And you can see I've scraped this to now. The ways slide real smooth. So the only thing that needed that I still need to do with this thing is one, still have the mounting holes on the bottom uh, that allow the whole assembly to be mounted on the surface plate, which is the machine base. Still got to drill those out. Uh, it's pretty straightforward though. And then the last thing is obviously some method of tool holding. Um, that I've not gotten too deep into yet. Uh, I'm going to design some sort of uh, quick change tool post, if you will, except it'll be a bit more fancy than just your standard lathe tool post. I want uh, some sort of kinematic uh, mounting interface. Uh, that way you can take tools on and off and get like sub-micron repeatability. I uh, don't have to worry about that affecting the precision or anything. And having a tool post like that uh, that has completely repeatable tools is really good uh, since it, this thing is going to be CNC'd eventually. Um, I can just set tool offsets in the program and then just get super repeatable parts all day. Speaking of CNC, you will notice that I've still got the original hand wheels on here. There's no motors on it yet. Um, that's just because I haven't gotten around to actually buying the motors. Once I get those, um, it's a pretty easy swap to put them on here with some standoffs and a coupling and whatnot. But before that, what I need to do is figure out a way to take out the backlash in these. I'm going to probably end up machining another nut and have them spring loaded against each other with a bit of preload uh, to take out the backlash. Just because since I am, I don't want to replace these lead screws because they're really nice and have a nice fine pitch. So converting to ball screws would, one, be expensive, and two, I'd lose a little bit of uh, resolution there. Uh, but if I am going to keep these st standard uh, V-thread lead screws, uh, taking out backlash is absolutely necessary. Right now it's pretty good. Uh, if you, on the graduations on here, there's only about two, three thou, but obviously that's an unacceptable amount. So that'll be uh, once again a pretty easy thing to fix. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be done. 
So that's where the XY table is. Now let's look at the fun stuff. That is the spindle. All right, so as you can see, the spindle is where I've been putting in most of my time. Uh, I haven't had as much time as I'd like overall to be working on this uh, during the last semester, but I've made a decent amount of progress. Um, I've also got a whole bunch more uh, building clips and other little things that I'll put uh, after this, or maybe overlay it, um, just to provide a bit more context so I'm not sitting here talking in front of a bunch of static objects the whole time. Uh, but yeah, what we've got so far is the housing, four radial air bearings, uh, the shaft, which is really nothing special, and then the uh, ball mounts that the bearings mount on. Um, so we'll start out, we'll start from the center outwards. This is the shaft. Uh, it's just a nine inch long piece of linear shafting from McMaster. Um, faced off one end, put a precision center in it. I had done that on the other side, but then I inspected it after the fact and it was a little bit out of tolerance, so I chopped that end off. I still have to reface that. Uh, the centers are super important because after the thrust face, um, the end of the shaft is mounted on, it needs to be turned between centers uh, to get it square as I possibly can with the uh, shaft itself before lapping. So having these uh, centers be perfectly concentric with the shaft is super important. So this one's uh, less than a tenth and the other one uh, less than a tenth concentric with the OD and then the other one was like two or three or something and but that was a little bit too much for me so I had to chop it off. Uh, but yeah, that's the shaft. Nothing special there. And we'll talk about the bearings. I've shown a lot uh, with the bearings so far, uh, but I just recently finished all four of them. Really nothing new here. Um, still a lot of epoxy on them. Uh, you've pretty much seen the whole building process for these. Uh, the boring head worked out pretty well. I was able to bore these really well. Um, the kinematic prisms that I showed, kinematic ball mounts, I've got those. Uh, doesn't want to focus, but I've got those mounted in there. Here is sort of a half complete ball mount. Yeah, I got a lot of questions about how I machined these because, I mean, yeah, it looks initially pretty complex, but as I explained, you just orient it at 45 degrees, take a slot, rotate it 60 degrees, slot, 60 degrees slot and you end up with this really complex looking shape all you then need to do is just take a little drill and flatten out that middle section it's a really good way of making ball mounts kinematic ball mounts with hardly any hassle uh, so now that those bearings are done i've spent countless hours testing them and tuning them um, I'll do a video soon on the tuning aspect because that's one thing you don't see any of in the whole like homemade air bearing YouTube category, if you will, is the actual tuning process, um, which is called impregnation uh, in the papers at least. But that's like one of the most important aspects of uh, making air bearings is getting them tuned properly and no one's talking about it. So I'll go over that in the video soon. If you want to make air bearings yourself, very highly recommend watching that because trust me, I struggled forever before I discovered this and couldn't get them to work well. Then I found this one paper and I was like, whoa, everything works, that's amazing. Lastly, we've got the housing itself. This thing is a beast. Um, by far the most expensive piece of material I've ever ordered. McMaster only sells Durabar in 18 inch sections. So it was a four inch ID, six inch OD, 18 inch long, massive piece of steel or cast iron that got delivered on a pallet. But uh, this is the finished, got some foam in the bottom there. This is the finished housing, all ready to go. Um, you'll notice these stripes on the outside. 
And this isn't scratches or anything. This is actually some sort of weird material defect, or maybe not defect, but artifact. Uh, that's just part of the cast iron. Uh, I think it's some sort of something to do with how it cooled or how it was cast or something, but there's just the finish is just different. I tried everything and I could not get a consistent finish across it. There's just these weird stripes. Um, from what I can tell, it shouldn't affect like the strength of the material that much, but it's just a shame it doesn't look perfectly consistent. Uh, yeah, bored out the inside, cut the recess here for the thrust bearing, got the O-rings installed. Um, these are the bolts that hold in the axial bearing. You'll notice they are overlapping. They're kind of sitting over the edge of that bore a little bit. And that's on purpose because those the little lips of the screws are what go in and hold the whole axial plenum in place. Um, well, that does indeed seem quite weak and inadequate, that's fine because it only needs to hold it for a very short amount of time. So obviously once the two thrust faces are preloaded, there's no more load on these. The uh, shaft itself is holding holding the whole package together, so these are really just to hold it in place while it's getting adjusted and assembled. So, Lastly, we've got the ball mounts. Uh, these are what the bearings mount on on the inside, just like this. I'll have some clips at the end where you can see the whole thing assembled with all four bearings in. Um, these turned out really nice, though. So what these are is just some standard half 20 uh, set screws that I turned down the ends of and then focus epoxied on these hardened ball bearings. So I'll have some pictures and clips after this or maybe right now showing sort of the process, but those balls are really well affixed on there. And then these are just these brass locking nuts that I made. Um, they sit in these little recesses on the housing. And that's just my method of uh, locking these in place once they're done, as opposed to just having a huge hexagonal nut jutting out of the outside. This looks a little bit more elegant. You will notice that these are half 20, and in my original video I was talking about doing 72 TPI uh, adjustment screws, and I tried that. Here I've got the tap that I tried to create. It's all rusted and messed up now, but as you can see, the threads are absolutely tiny, and while this tap half worked, the main problem I was having was the thread strength just wasn't high enough because these threads are so small with the amount of preload that I wanted to put on them, it probably just would have stripped these out almost immediately. I mean, these are truly, and I mean, yeah, you're not going to be able to see them up close. These threads are just too weak, basically. Um, and when I looked into it, the trade-off between adjustment convenience, between like the two different TPIs, it just wasn't worth having a potentially weaker bolt. So yeah, it is going to be a little bit more finicky with these 20 TPI ones, but it's still doable. It's just definitely a lot stronger than this. So, so that's pretty much everything. Um, all that I need to do now uh, as far as the spindle goes, is just make the axial bearings, uh, put those in place, make the thrust faces for the shaft itself, uh, get those put on, and then uh, it'll be just about ready to go. Um, as usual, if you have any questions, just put them in the comments. Uh, I enjoy answering them there, and there's often lots of questions because I often forget to mention a lot of things in the video, but uh, just ask and I'll do my best to answer them. There'll be some uh, clips after this 
probably of some more things. Uh, I'll voice over them and kind of explain what's going on. But yeah, that's what's up. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope you enjoy this project. I'm having a lot, a lot of fun doing it, but it's also kicking my butt. So I'll keep working on it. Uh, and thanks for watching. So here's kind of the process for making those uh, ball stud mounts. Just started uh, by drilling out uh, four uh, hardened ball bearings, used an end mill to make a flat bottom hole. Um, then took those stainless steel uh, set screws, turned down a little boss on the end that was a nice snug fit in the balls. Uh, they were then epoxied on. Uh, the inner joint I just used reg regular epoxy on. Uh, what you're seeing here is um, some cellulose filled epoxy I used to make sort of secondary fillets around the outside of the joint just for a little extra uh, stability. And then here they are all done. Uh, I've got their little locking nuts on the bottom. Yeah, it turned out looking really nice. So here's a little sequence of the uh, spindle progress. Uh, here just starting a rough turn. Um, get the OD cleaned up. Uh, next, threw it on the uh, CNC. Cut the little uh, recesses and holes in the side for the four ball mounts. Uh, just one program, indexed four times. I uh, ran it four times. Uh, next part was the axial uh, bearing mounts. So that was another CNC program. Just cutting the recess, cutting a couple O-ring grooves, air distribution groove, and then the holes for the bolts that hold it all together. Here's what it looks like after all that work's done. Uh, just tapping the holes here for the 1032 bolts that hold it all together. Uh, and then lastly, just boring the thing. Uh, really not a critical dimension here, just the whole point was to clean it up and get it concentric with everything else. So here we have the whole process of making one of those radial bearings from start to finish. Just starting out with a block of mild steel. First stop does this little pocket here. Uh, it gets flipped over, uh, runs the cycle for the back. This is just the uh, 3D contour for the little fillet. Then goes in, interpolates the bores, drills the hole for the uh, air fitting. And it comes out looking like this. Uh, here they are next to the older bearings, you can tell they're a little bit shinier. Uh, here's the graphite blanks ready to be machined next. Uh, work holding is just double sided tape on some MDF, actually works really well. Uh, starting out just uh, facing the top off here, nothing fancy. Then comes in for a 2D contour to take the whole piece to size. This is a really cool looking cut, looks like just black smoke coming off. It takes forever to clean the machine this way, but it's just a lot easier to do it in the Haas rather than having to hassle around with all the uh, crappy tolerances on the router. Here's that graphite uh, post machining ready to go in. Uh, it just gets epoxied in like this. The sides are sealed up. And it gets bored out, uh, which I've showed before. And there's the finished bearings. And here it is all together. So this is all four uh, radial bearings in the housing with the shaft in it, mounted up, ready to go. Uh, here we just have two of the bearings in there, the shafts mounted in, and I've got the whole thing tilted in such a way where it's uh, doing that self-propelling effect that I talked about in that other video. Uh, so this is just playing with a couple of them. Uh, but here we have all four in there. This is demonstrating the gimbling ability of the bearings on their ball mounts. Um, not a whole lot of preload in this demo, but really shows how the shaft is going to be able to align and uh, find its uh, find itself square with the thrust bearings uh, on the on the housing. Uh, here it is with a little bit of preload on it, um, just spinning it spin it around. Uh, you can see it's not behaving that frictionlessly. And that's not because of the bearings, it's just because it's resting on something in the back uh, that's rubbing on it so the shaft doesn't fall out, but that does cause a little bit of friction. Same thing here, just vertically. And yeah, that's it. Um, really appreciate uh, the support I'm getting on this project. Uh, I'll keep working on it as soon as I get back to school. 
Uh, stay tuned for updates, and I uh, can't wait to see where this goes next. Thanks for watching.